What's going on, Periscope? Keith B. Dixon, it's official, you guys. We are here in the Kilo What's Bro. Going on, Periscope? Keith B. Dixon, it's official, you guys. We are here in the Kilo Bro. We are, you guys, I'm trying to have one of those like super clean, smooth nights. I'll tell you, it's always the littlest things. You make one little change and guess what? It was messed up. But anyway, um, I had my other phone on. You guys, I'm going to share this broadcast out tonight. Um, I'm going to actually go in right now on Facebook. I'm, I'm actually doing this right now. I'm going to go into Facebook and I'm going to share into some groups let me see here i'm just gonna pick one photographers working together so it's actually one of my groups um and i'm gonna share into that group the broadcast live so people can actually see it yes thank you you guys thank you for the shares as well and um let me you know what it's already sharing on Twitter. Anyway, welcome to the Kilo Bravo Delta Zone. My name is Keith B. Dixon, commercial photographer all day, every day. This is how we do it, 7705 Pacific Standard Time, you guys. I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited tonight. We're going to talk a, a little bit about aperture. This time, I'm going to show you some photographs, or not photographs. I'm going to show you some diagrams that will help you break it down. I hope they're big enough so that you can see them. We're going to talk about that tonight. And then I'm going to show you how many Twitter uh, how many Twitter people do we have on in the broadcast tonight? And by the way, I'm doing a dual broadcast, so I'm broadcasting to both platforms. I am actually on YouTube right now. So I'm on YouTube right now, so you can come on over. And uh, YouTube is looking actually really good. But um, how many, how many, uh, throw up a Wi-Fi if you use Twitter in your social media, because I'm going to share something with you guys tonight that you can use is a great tool that you can use to basically uh, ramp up your content. How many of you guys use Twitter on a regular basis? Uh, our exposure account, Barry, Joe. Okay, so this you guys are in for a treat. Thank you so much for uh, sharing, by the way, and thank you for the hearts, you guys. You know, we're already uh, roughly about 15.5 million, so we're almost due to half. We're almost to 16 million. Can you imagine by the end of the year? Um, I'm going to say third quarter prediction. Third quarter, we are literally going to be around 20 million, 20 million hearts, you guys. That's pretty amazing. I, I got to tell you, that's a lot of finger tapping, and um, you guys, I got to that's dope deb by the way you are the second the second most popular super fan on the broadcast you are number two you are the number two super fan in the broadcast and lamar obviously is number one and the heart count actually went up so the average used to be about ten thousand hearts per broadcast i kid you not right um, 10,000 hearts and, um, Lamar has actually contributed, contributed about 14 on the average of 14,000 hearts, um, over the time on his broadcast. So 14,000 is the number you guys to beat. So there's a, a narrow, narrow gap between first and second, 14,000 hearts average crazy you guys crazy crazy and that's it's not in one broadcast it's over a number of broadcasts and that's how they i don't know how they calculate how they calculate it totally but um yeah so that's that's uh that's that you guys know that um so i've been tweeting out the uh broadcast for the uh, the podcast and i haven't updated the the podcast as of yet because i want you guys to really embrace terrell and matthew and I think it's important because those guys are, are groundbreaking, making history in their own rights. So uh, as soon as we, we uh, I'm going to say probably this weekend, I'm going to start changing out. I'm going to add maybe a couple more speakers and um, we're going to get back to regular business, the, the regular business of basically talking about photography and, and plowing through it and what we need to know to motivate ourselves. So that's where we'll be. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's see names and locations so we can kind of get started. And I'm going to, tonight I'm going to show you some diagrams and some things that I found on Pinterest that I think will be useful for you because you can actually download these yourself on Pinterest. So, but let me see names and locations, names and locations. Thank you for the hearts, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
let me see names and locations. There's Maryland right there. Maryland can sing. Calvin from Fort Worth. Calvin, what's up? Deb from the D, what up, doe? Cheryl from the D, what up, doe? Yes. Um, you, you gotta, you guys, I love Detroit. Detroit's like, I'm gonna say, minus the snow, almost a close second home. Cat from Ohio, Michelle, Captain Joe, Barry, core one member all day. Captain Lamar making Georgia all day. Shannon back in the SD. What's up, Shannon? Yes. I love doing it. You know, I, I kind of wanted to be an announcer back in the day, I guess. <laughs> all that crazy, uh, uh, you know, crazy things that they do. And he dunks it backwards. And the crowd is going. Okay. All right. I, I was having a, a relapse, you guys. On the uh, YouTube side, Michelle. What's up, Michelle? What's going on? Okay. I heard that uh, if you're watching this on your television, it actually looks really good. That's the feedback that I've been getting. It's a score as he slams backwards as he runs across the goal line. Yes. Okay, you guys. Anyhow, um, let me tell you what's going to happen. I didn't talk about the 90 PT uh, for a little bit. Just a, a quick second. Um, you guys know about the 90 PT program. I'm going to be making some changes to the actual platform. So uh, get ready for that. I've got some new innovations that I'm going to bring in and uh, make it just a little bit more robust and then uh, we're going to pump out those those classes right now there's about four months worth of material on and uh, we meet again on the third saturday of this month 9 a.m it starts promptly goes 90 minutes um time for q a and then uh, the video will generally post uh, within 24 hours. And then I'm going to post, and I haven't posted the, uh, there's another video that I'm going to put in because we missed, we were in, um, we were in Detroit for exposure. So we missed that month. I want to make sure that we don't miss anything. So I'm going to plug the 90 PT back in and, that, and that's where you can find it. If you're interested in joining you guys, it's 290 for the entire year. And um, in the new program, I'm actually going to do a two-part payment system and um i'm thinking about that that's i don't want to get ahead of myself and i'm thinking about actually doing a payment system if i don't have to manage it i'm going to do it so um if i got to manage it probably not it's just too much to keep up with you guys so um but that's what we're going to be doing for the 90 pt i'm going to try to make it accessible to everybody because i know that everybody doesn't have 290 dollars. you know that's a lot of cash so i'm just Bear with me. I'm trying to figure out how um, I can set up some auto pays and all that kind of stuff so that we don't have to worry about it. So that's where we're going with the 90 PT. It's a great program. And uh, you, if you're if you're in it, you're I mean, obviously, you know what's going on uh, in the program. And you can share that information out. And I might even create an affiliates program so that if you tell somebody about it, you can get something in return extra month. Um, a free year. I don't know. We're going to figure that out. So that's where we're at. Okay. You guys, as you can see, I'm managing a lot here. <laughs> the, the, this is the uh, YouTube screen right here. The, the main screen I'm using the computer is over. There's another computer right here. And, and this is what I'm actually looking at. You guys see this right here. I'm actually looking at your comments on this phone, which is on an Archon mount. Yes, the, the mountain is actually sitting on the floor. It's, you know, Archons, they have, uh, you guys have seen the tweets come out. Matter of fact, you could just use the Bomb Squad code, save t a whole 20% off of any product that they have. Yes, a true nut is probably uh, an accurate description. I am just nutty for um, technology, I guess. All right, uh, let's 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 dive into, I want to I show you guys a couple things that I saw. Um, here's... So as you know, I do a daily. This comes out. I got a lot of information. You know, my day is action packed, you guys. It literally is. It's crazy. And I'll, I try to take time out and breaks, you know, in between. But it just makes things go by fast. It makes the day go by faster. And there's always something to do. And one of the things that I do is I curate this uh, daily called the F Stop It Now. It comes out at 1030 Pacific Standard Time. There's a bunch of articles in here that I'll curate. Um 
pretty regularly. I, I do this. This is my newspaper. This is how I, I read the news in photography to see what's going on. And there's some interesting articles here. I think if you're going to read uh, anything on here, I would probably go for this article right here, the torture test. Um, if your camera shutter fails, sometimes you don't realize what's going on. It, it might even be kind of mind boggling, but they talk about, especially for you, for the Canon people, um, they talk about shutter failure and most shutter, most cameras, uh, I'm going to say consumer, I'm going to say prosumer, prosumer cameras will typically go about 150 actuations, 150 actuations, you guys. And, um, that that's uh that's where we are Pro, the bigger bodies will go 250,000 and i don't know if you guys know this i actually have a camera with 247 million actuations on it yes this is true i've verified it over three sources 247 million actuations on one camera so what's up what's up so um there it is so you you might want to check that out here's another one um, this is off of the daily, you guys. This is off of the daily. Um, if you scroll down, and I, you guys have heard this before, there's a technology section that talks about live streaming, 12 video tips, and, you know, it's good stuff. If you're interested in live streaming, I would definitely read that. Um, here's an article that I thought was really interesting, too. Um, this 12, and what I do is I read the headers. If the headers don't line up, I generally don't read the article. But if the headers line up, then I'll read the article. Like the, if you're live streaming, make sure you have the camera on you. Introduce yourself. Uh, location, it depends. I would be kind of vague about that. Uh, the takeaway, what, what are people going to learn tonight? You're going to learn about, basically tonight, you're going to learn about aperture. Be professional, humorous, natural, prepared, be authentic, fast. The one thing that I notice a lot of live streamers do, because I study a lot of live streaming scopes, is they'll, especially with, mostly with women, they'll kind of play with their hair a lot. I noticed that, 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 for me, that just means that's a nervous tick, you know, especially if you're just coming on and you're kind of doing all this kind of stuff, right? Uh, kind of takes away from the credibility a little bit. So uh, it, it kind of gives people the sense that you weren't prepared or that you're not going to be prepared, especially people who are looking for content. So if you're a live streamer, get on and, and just go. If you have some problems, that, you know, with the technology, that's different. But if you're getting on and you're kind of primping and prepping, that's not a good look. So keep that. Yeah. And, and I'm unfortunately, I'm picking on the ladies here um, with guys. Generally, here's the thing that I notice with guys. They typically have the camera coming upwards. I noticed that I don't know what it is with guys. And I see this with with women as well. But the camera's always pointed up. You always want the camera to be at eye level. You don't want to be looking down. And the reason for that is when you're looking down, it's, it kind of gives people the impression that you're looking down on them. So you want to be really careful with that. People are very sensitive. So um, that's what I would have to add to this. Uh, one thing that I didn't agree with in this article is they say a lot of people will watch the replay and less will watch the live and more will watch the replay. Um, yeah, it, it is. It is the, the whole. Re it is. You're right. Um, here's what I would say. Not, it kind of depends on, on the content. You know, there's no way to really gauge that more people are going to watch a replay. I wouldn't bank on that. You know, sometimes I'll have massive views and then massive replays and sometimes massive views and little replays. It just kind of depends on people's people's time. Be regular. You definitely have to be regular. I come on at a very specific time. But um, if you're just starting out, you want to come on at some time that people can predict that you will. So if it's if you're normally around eight o'clock, come on, you know, in, in a time frame like, OK, I'll be on between eight and eight thirty because you don't want to keep people waiting for you to broadcast. I would definitely say be on at a specific time as opposed to being regular. All right. Now, for all you Twitter folks. I want to share this with you. This is really important. This is going to be a great tip for you. There's a website. This company is is overseas. They're they're based in Holland, I believe, and it's called Twitter Counter. And I have I actually have a premium account on here. And this is how I this is one of the tools that I use to actually measure what I'm doing. Now, 
you guys may not have seen me as much on social. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually tanking out my my social media right now. And it's something that I do once a year, usually around this time. <clears throat> tanking out essentially means that um, I'm going to kind of stop the process and see how much drop I get in everything that I do. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring my bottom threshold of my social. If I did nothing, how far would it drop? It's almost like taking an airplane and just taking it into a deep dive and and, and knowing, okay, I got to pull up now. This is too low. I can't recover from that. So right now, I'm going to run analytics so you guys can see. I'm pretty close to like, okay, put, I got to put the brakes on right here. And then I'm going to pull it back up. The reason for that, as you guys know, I'm going to be speaking in uh, Nashville in 2018. For the next six months, I am going to drive my social media with the strategies that I'm going to introduce to you in Nashville. So that you guys can see exactly, thank you, so you guys can see exactly how the strategy works, why it works, and, and most importantly, how it works. Does that make sense? If that's making sense for you guys, I want you to put in, um, let's go, uh, let's go 2.2. And hello, by the way, if you guys are just tuned in, um, if, if you just tuned in, just put your name in and uh, I'll say hello. If I'm, if you see me looking at the camera, I can't see your comments, your comments, because if you see me looking down at like this, then I definitely can. So what's up, Egypt? What's going on, Pam? How you doing, Pam? Fantastic. Thank you guys for joining in. So here's the website that we're on. It's called twittercounter.com. And you can, you can there's, it's free, but I have a premium account. And I'm not sure if you can get this feature in here, but you can check. So what we're going to do is we're going to analyze my Twitter feed. We're doing this live, you guys. We're going to analyze my Twitter feed. It's funny, drinking coffee. Okay, so here's what comes back right away. And I'm going to point out some things on here that are really important. These are things that I, I, if I was on stage talking about social media as it relates to you, the photographer, these are going to be critical points. So anything that I touch on and talk about and elaborate on is important. So as you can see, I've been on Twitter since 2009 and I have a worldwide ranking out of a sample of 1.2 million of 215. So of the sample, they've probably taken a sample of 215,000. Uh, or 1.2 million Twitter users and said, okay, how does his Twitter account stack up against these people? And my rank fell into the 50 percentile. So that's pretty strong, just to say, to say the least. And I'm going to show you where that is. So um, what it does is it goes through and it checks your, look, number one thing that it checks is your profile. Your profile is critical to your social media. It is critical, a mission critical. Because when people see your information coming out in your feed, the first thing they're going to do is go to your profile. Your profile moves in tandem with a lot of your other statistics. So when your followers drop off, guess what? The So do the views to your profile. They rise in tandem together. So your profile picture is critical and your website is even more critical. These are critical. Landing page, blog, wherever you need to be. You got to you got to get it together. Um, background header. Those things are also important. You don't want to use a You don't want to be call yourself a professional something and then have a generic background or header. So you want to personalize that experience for people coming in. So um, as you can see, everything is healthy there. Now we're going to go now they're going to analyze the content. And, and what it's doing is it's creating a comparisons and it's talking about the number of followers. Now, remember, I told you my retweetability and, you know, basically I'm just taking my my uh, Twitter feed into a deep dive because I want you guys to know that I'm really managing this. And as you can see, everything is pretty healthy. Um, I have way over the, the average number of Twitter. You don't have to have 48,000 people in your feed to be successful on Twitter. You could have 20,000, you could have 2,000 and still achieve the exact same thing. Um, average tweets per day, um, my tweet, my retweetability. So I haven't been retweeting a lot. I've been engaging very little. 
right? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deb, for letting me know. Um, so there's my retweet ability. As you can see, it's miserable. They don't play around like, hey, Keith, what's going on, right? And there's actually another report that outlines very specific things in your Twitter feed once you, once you, um, I don't know if that might be a paid feature, but I mean, it gives you a whole paragraph and it breaks it down on percentiles, where you rank, what you're doing wrong. They make it kind of funny. It's not so sterile. Okay. And here's, it'll give you some recommendations on what you need to do. When I first started this, I actually went through, and this was my guide for basically, um, setting up my Twitter and how I managed it. So a paid profile is about $10 a month. Um, and that'll get you some added benefits and then the price hikes up pretty high. So as you can see, I have a pretty high rating. Awesome. You scored an A plus on your profile. You don't need, um, and then here's some extra tips and so on and so on. So, and it gives you a full on report. Is that free full of value or what you guys? I'm going to tell you right now, this right here is a golden nugget. If this is free full of value, I want you to put in 3.3. Let's go 3.3. Use this as a guideline to guide your Twitter, and you can also use it on other and other social on other social platforms as well. You can use this; you just tweak it a little bit. But if you're saying, Keith, how do you get it done on Twitter? This is exactly how I get it done. Now, Keith, why the deep dive on the Twitter? Because it's hard work and you can't do it 12 months a year by yourself. You got to take a break. So this is also my time to take a break and step back, you know, after six months of grinding it and say, what do I need to do different? How do I do it different? And um, to help you, to help you, the thing that I'm going to do or the thing that I've already done today, I submitted my article to for Professional Photographers of America. I'm not exactly sure what edition it's going to run in. But um, I talked about three critical strategies. I talked about the mindset of the article or the, the strategy, the mindset of the strategy. I talked about do's and don'ts. Very specific, you guys. So if you look at what I just told you tonight and then you couple that with that PPA article when it comes out. I got to tell you, that's probably it's probably a five hundred dollar seminar easy just on that content alone easy so i hope you guys are coming to imaging because i am going to lay it out all right um if you're trying to find where i am from an educational standpoint here's how you do it workshops.keithbdixon.online this is how you can find me uh, i'm here if you want to sign up for some stuff, um, I don't really have anything that you can really sign up for right now uh, outside of, I mean, maybe if you wanted to do like a one-on-one, -on -one, um, depending on how much you wanted to do, I might entertain it, you know, for, uh, you know, we can put it on the table, but it just, it's going to depend on how long and how much you want to do. So if you're just looking for something really short and quick, I'd probably tell you to come back towards the end of the year. If you're looking for something long term, because photography takes that, you know, till it, you've got to be in it to win it for for a while. Then, yes, we could probably talk. Um, also, the 90 PT is uh, it's that's still available. So you could still do that. It's the only program you could sign up for is a two hundred ninety dollar program right now. All right. Let's get on with this major topic tonight. You guys, we're talking about depth of field. I'm going to show you some slides. You can find these on Pinterest. Uh, that's the one thing that I love about Pinterest. It's all graphical, like not just photographs, but graphics of things. You guys, I got to love it. So, um, you know, that, that kind of makes it, uh, I'm not selling this information. So it kind of, you know, this is like public domain kind of stuff. So um, hopefully, you know. I don't get in trouble for showing someone's graphic, but, and I don't know who produced it. So I, I can't, I can't even really give them credit. So I pulled this off of Google and, but you can also find it on Pinterest as well. Now check this out. Here's what we're looking at. If you look at, let me, let me bring this in. If you look at the very top of the screen, you're going to see a man with a tripod. You're going to see uh, a person standing there. You don't want them to get their picture taken, those people right there. And then you're going to see a cow and a tree in the back. So look at the very top. 
um, F28. So remember yesterday we were talking about f-stops and depth of field. Um, we're going to forego all the lens and camera stuff, and I'm going to talk about this just from the surface level. As you can see at f28, the fo everything from uh, the, the, the photographer to the person is completely out of focus. You see that? Because we're, we're working with shallow depth of field. Even the cow. So we have a narrow focus from the front to the subject and from the back to the cow. So our front is out of focus and our back is out of focus. I know you're probably thinking like, that is crazy. How could the front be out of focus? Well, there's. I want you to think about a tunnel. Right. When you set your your red box inside of the camera on your subject's eye, I want you to think about that as creating a, a tunnel of sharpness. Everything around that tunnel of sharpness is out of focus. It's cloudy except for that one straight tunnel to the subject. And then everything behind your subject, there's no more tunnel. The tunnel stops at your subject because the box is sitting on the eye, right? You're getting your metering information and all that kind of stuff that the camera that's that's reading back to the camera. And then everything behind the subject is completely out of focus. That is shallow depth of field, and that's what you're going to get around f2818 or 4. Isn't that a, isn't that amazing? I think this is a really good graphic. I wish I knew who designed it because I would definitely give them credit all day. And I can see on Facebook or actually on YouTube, I hope it's not cutting off on the border. Uh, Michelle, on YouTube, can you see the F28 part? Can you see the F28 part? Let me know. Can you see the F28? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh it and drag it down a little bit so that you, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can actually see the F28 at the top. Okay, great. All right. Now, if we go down one more, and hopefully you've already scanned through this and you've kind of got some ideals, that would be the smart thing to do, right? Is to, as I'm sitting here explaining it, you're scanning through. So when I start talking about it, you can say, that's what I thought. And that's how it's going to ring a bell. Now, look at F4. Look at F4. We're getting a little bit more in focus, a little, just a tad bit more in focus in the background, right? But our foreground is staying the same. It's still out of focus, um, not as much, but it's still out of focus in the foreground. Our middle ground is uh, starting, is, is probably about the same, just a little wider, and then our background is starting to come in focus. That's what F4 is gonna give you, it looks something like that. Now, as we go to five, six, that person that's standing there in the foreground is actually starting to come into focus a little bit more. Now, if you look back behind the person at four feet and five feet, you'll notice that six and seven feet, we're starting to get a little bit more clarity. It's the fog is starting to clear up. We're starting to get depth. We're going into depth of field. Remember DOF, D-O-F, depth of field? As we go down to eight, now that person in the foreground is completely in focus at f8 and the cows and everything is so we've got approximately um so if there's eight feet there we have about six feet of in focus image six feet of in focus image you're saying keith but it, it all looks in focus well if you look at where the where the photographer's standing the first one and two feet are out of focus and then it goes into focus you know what? That's always going to be the case. That's a tip for you guys. That's always going to be the case when you're using depth of field. You got to be real careful. And this is why your angle of view, your angle of view in your camera is important because if you're using a narrow angle of view, let's say you're using an 85, right? Everything right here might be out of focus. You go to do the enlargement and the bottom of the picture is super soft. And you're saying, what happened? I was shooting at F8. I was shooting at... Uh, a, a really big aperture what happened to my image well you were using a narrow depth of field so you know what you're going to get that out of focused image and this goes into a very complicated explanation of hyper focus and how it works i'm not going to do it tonight but it's real you guys that's how complicated this stuff can be so hopefully you guys are understanding 
and picking up and grasping on this concept of depth. If so, I want you to put in a Wi-Fi. If you don't understand, I just want you to put in an N for no, I don't understand. And then I'm going to I'm going to go back over. Don't worry. We're going to review. So if you understand where we're going, just throw up a Wi-Fi for me. What's up, Van? There he is, Mr. Kelly. What's up? Katrina. Hey, pretty easy stuff, right? Did I see Danielle on here? Daryl Hutton, hype man extraordinaire. Danielle, are you on here? I thought I saw you. I thought I saw I was kind of peeping down at the screen. You know, I was cutting my eyes over at the comments. Is Danielle? I thought I saw Danielle on here. Pretty easy, right? Yes. Right, Marilyn? Okay. See how easy that gets? Now, once we go down to um, F11, you'll start to notice the uh, F11 is changing. We're starting to get more in focus. If we're using a wide angle, F11 is probably going to be clean all the way through. So we'll get nine feet of sharpness f22 um now here i gotta i gotta put a disclaimer on this you guys when you're shooting at f22 if you don't have a pro lens or medium format you're gonna get what's called diffraction is and diffraction uh is, is a funny thing because it, it comes with not only do, do you get diffraction but you also get a lot of flaring and funny stuff so on the edges of the people You'll see like green halos and all that kind of stuff. You'll see, um, I like to call, uh, you'll see the red, blue, and green specks in your photograph. It's, it's just nasty. It's, you can't fix it, right? It, it, if you try to, it's like trying to, it, it's like making a bad meal. Like it, the food is just bad and then you just add seasoning to it to make it taste good. But it's, it just looks bad, right? And you can tell it might you can't even change the smell. You might be able to change the taste a little bit, but you can't change the smell. That's what diffraction will do to your image, you guys. Is this making sense? Is this making sense? Uh, if it is, I want you guys to drop in because I'm gonna show you another slide right after this. And we're gonna get up out of here. Is this making sense for you guys? I want you to put in uh, 7.7. Let's go. 7.7. Let's do this like Brutus. 7.7. Let's go. Mm -hmm. If you guys are just tuning in, my name is Keith B. Dix, and I'm a commercial photographer all day, every day. This is the Kilo Bravo Delta Zone official, 7705 Pacific Standard Time, five days a week. Five days a week, you guys. Literally, I'm on here five days a week broadcasting. This is what I do. This is how I do it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if you're interested in the Bomb Squad community, let me show you how we can get there. Let me show you guys the bomb. Let me tell you, we're going to digress just really quick, and then I'm going to get up out of here in about three minutes. Um, let me show you guys this. Yes, the Hitman. Two N's, two T's, baby. Yes. Okay. So here's the, uh, we're going to go over to the Bomb Squad. Here's our page. And you can get there. As you can see, we've got 13 people wanting to join. So after the 8th, I am going to start adding people. Now, my assistant, Zuri, my granddaughter, that's my granddaughter, Zuri. She's my assistant. She likes to block people, too, which is, I have to talk to her about that. You know, she's the first assistant I've ever had that will just block you for no reason at all. So we got to keep her away from the phone. But um, Zuri said that, you guys needed to sound off by July 8th, and we are we have 300 people in the, so right now, I actually subtracted some people out, but we had, we have 291 right now, and I've already deleted some, some old profiles, and um, so we're going to fill this number into, the, we're going to fold this number into this 291, which I expect to go down, and what you want to do is you want to get, oops, well, oh, that's a nice shot, Amber. That was a nice shot. I like that. Okay. Oh, there's Amber's shot right there. Look at that. That's pretty. That's a dope shot. That's. I like that. Good job, Amber. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna look at this count right here. You see where it says one sixteen, one sixteen. Here's what's gonna happen. My expectation is 
of 300, maybe 1% of 300 is actually active in the community. That's, that's my prediction. 1%. 1%. So what I'm doing here, guys, guys and girls, is I'm testing the validity of the group. I want to see how many people are physically active. So if we had 3,000, that number might be 300 responses, 400 responses. It kind of depends on the community. But ultimately, what I want to do is I want to see how strong the core is in this in this particular community. And when we uh, talk to sponsors and they say, well, you know, how strong is your community? And it's like, well, we, you know, we did a, a cleanse and we got the 1% because 1% one is the expectation. So when advertisers look at the numbers, they, they're generally banking on one or a half a percent will respond. So that's what we're doing here, you guys. Is that making sense for you? Is that making sense? Throw in a Wi-Fi for me. Throw up a Wi-Fi for me if it's making sense. And I'm going to take you through this last slide and we're going to be up out of here. So let everybody know in the squad, if you know somebody that hasn't responded, let them know. Say, hey, you guys, quit playing. You know, if you're going to be active, be active. If not, uh, if, if you get deleted out, you can always come back. I mean, it's not a big deal. As long as, you're in, as long as you're in good standing with the group. As long as you're in good standing with the group, you're good to go. Now, I want to point this out. Um, I saw this, and they, they had both dials for Nikon and Canon. So in your camera controls, you guys, a lot of people don't really understand what these camera controls mean sometimes, but it's just really simple. So everything that we talked about tonight, if you're a can, if you own a Canon camera, because there's also Sony is, is stepping up. If you own a, a Canon camera, AV is going to be probably what you're used to seeing. So you see where it says uh, TV, AV, and then that uh, there's another one on there, A. Canon might or Nikon or Sony might use A and then Nikon just uses A as well so those are the dials all the other dials on there are pretty much automatic settings based on what you might be photographing so if you're super brand new and you're going to uh, a marathon and it's it's sunny outside um, you might want to use the the little running the, the icon of the person running because that's just going to set you up with the right exposure. That's not kind of what we do here. But, you know, if you've got to shoot, you know, like that, um, I would say go ahead. But for the most part, I'd say I kind of avoid the, unless you're super brand new, avoid the icons and, and go right to the letters. Start working the letters, even if you're using them on auto. And us pros, we do use aperture priority and some of us shutter priority. Rarely do we use P for program mode, which controls both shutter speed and aperture. But I'm going to tell you, I definitely use aperture priority the most. And if I'm shooting something very specific, um, like if I'm panning sometimes and, and it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm heated up, I might use shutter priority. It just kind of depends. So there it is. All right, you guys, I'm going to get up out of here. I'm going to actually broadcast uh, for about 20 minutes on Facebook and then I'm up out of here. I won't be on tomorrow evening because it is my 20th year anniversary 20 years with my wife you guys we're celebrating it tomorrow and i'm really excited about that so um i think we're going out to dinner and we're gonna do some stuff and and we're gonna take a vacation at the beginning of next month <laughs> thank you all right, there it is right there. Keith B. Dixon, it's official. You've been hit by the hit, man, you guys. This is how we roll. I'm going to be jumping right over to Facebook and and just basically re-thank you. are welcome, Amber. And rebroadcasting this exact same content. It'll sound just a little different, but, you know, what the heck, right? Facebook is, is isolating us out. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, who else? Michelle, there's so we've got two people over on, on the YouTube side, you know. Hey, look, you got to start somewhere, remember, right? I started with zero followers on Twitter. I've got um, two watching tonight. Hey, it's never stopped anything. Thank you, guys. So, look, let me get on out of here. It's been great. You guys?
do a request to join. If the bomb squad looks interesting to you, it looks like something you want to be a part of, definitely join. We will vet out your profile to make sure you ain't slipping and tripping, cussing and fussing. I will see you on Facebook, and I'll see you for morning motivation off the top of the dome, 7.30.35 Pacific Standard Time in the Kilo Bravo Delta Zone. My name is Keith B. Dixon. I'll see you guys. Peace.